you, Lord. Well, are you ready for the word tonight? Well, this is uh, going to be one of those messages that I really believe will be one that we'll want to listen to again and again. And uh, it's one of those things that it's, um, it's kind of like I couldn't wait, you know. Um, this Sunday we have Brother Marty, and I believe there's going to be an on-time word. The week after that, we're going to just be going over some review of what last year looked like and kind of cast some vision for tomorrow. But this is about um, uh, living the God kind of life. You know, there was a, a man, a young man, um, who had a lot of life before him. And uh, I wasn't going to sing a country song, but I don't know why that started to sound like one. Um, but it was the rich young ruler. And, uh, and he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And the long story short of this is Jesus simply said this, if you want a, the God kind of life, if you want a Zoe life, you're going to just simply have to lay something down. And so that's what we're going to talk about tonight, is laying something down. And uh, the title of tonight's message, before we get into it, is this, it's uh, Wisdom Carved Out. And, uh, and, you know, it's interesting, even the song that we sang tonight uh, for worship to, pr to prime to prime hearts, to prime, uh, in a sense, uh, just the, the, in a sense, the atmosphere of what, so the word could go forth unhindered. We were saying, I will make room for you, uh, because the reality is uh, we all have been using all 24 hours of our day, whether they've been wise or not, for the last, as long as we've been alive. Whether we, whether we, they, they're, they're, you cannot use 24, more, more hours than you have in a day, and they've all been being used. And so if you're gonna if you're gonna have the God kind of life, you're gonna have to carve out some things. You're gonna have to carve out some things. You're gonna have to make room for him, right? Make room for him, and it's whatever you want to, right? Lord, whatever you want to. And so many times when the Lord asks us to do something, what we do is we give him the thing that's the most convenient and that costs us the least. You know, it's, you know that, that five minutes that we can spare here because I got margin. So we give God the margin. And um, David said, uh, far be it from me, he's talking about giving an offering to the Lord, that I would give anything to the Lord, uh, something that costs me nothing. And I believe that that's not the, the picture that God's looking for, longing for. Matter of fact, unsuccessful people are always led by convenience and comfort. And so if you want to uh, fail... Uh, this year, and, and what I mean by fail is I mean fail to um, walk in the God kind of life. Um, I would even say it this way. If you want to miss the mark or stop short of the mark, if you don't want to be able to say, I finished, um, then you just need to just let everything be as, it's, as it was and give him whatever's convenient, and you'll find because it didn't cost you much, uh, it won't be long until you real, don't even recognize whether or not you're still giving it. So, um, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it sometimes when the Lord speaks to us, uh, his goal, you know, or what he wants for our lives, we treat it like our weight loss goal this year. Somebody was asking me about weight loss, you know, like, uh, where are you like going to lose some weight? Or are you going to, and I said, well, really my weight loss goal is just that I could clip my toenails and breathe at the same time. So, <laughs> no, not really. That was just a joke. But that's how we treat, um, that's how a lot of times we treat the the, like the, the, our lives, and we have one trip, but we just treat it like, well, you know, as long as I can breathe and clip my toenails at the same time, I'm good. The scale doesn't matter. The pants don't matter. Just as long as, oh, I just spread my legs. And, oh, yeah, these ain't so bad, you know. So how many of you ever had a pregnant wife or, you know, like to trying to paint toenails, and then it becomes you're the painter, you know. And thank God I was a painter, so I was a good toenail painter. Um, but uh, anyway, God wants, God wants more than anything else for you and I to walk in and, and, and flourish in the grace that he provided and gave to each one of us. Did you know he gave us grace? Grace is gifts, his, his unmerited favor on our lives. There's favor and grace on your life to finish a work. To, to, to do what all that he's called you to. To walk in at what the, this rich young ruler realized, I've had, all these things have been done, but there's something I still lack. And he knew it. But how you get it is you're going to have to lay something down. So let's just pray before we uh, get into the word. Father, thank you so much for your word tonight. We thank you that we have eyes that see, we have ears that hear, and hearts that understand. You know, 
any time, um, you know, Pastor, Pastor Evan was talking tonight about finances, you know, in any time um, you talk about finances, uh, it doesn't matter if you are a giver and a tither, you're just maybe afraid someone might ask for more. Or you know what I'm talking about. It's like, ah, uh, you know, like you start talking, like you reach for your po pocket. It's like, it's it just, it's, it's interesting. It's just the way that God, you know, th this earth is designed. You know, money is the least, yet it echoes as the most. And, and I'm just going to reiterate what she said in a, in a, different, uh, a different word or a different phrase. Um, and this is found in James, uh, chapter 1. And we're talking about, um, let's, we're, let's go this way. Today is January 3rd. Last year, January 3rd, you might have made some goals. Did you make some goals? I don't know if you made some goals. But the chances of you, a lot of times us finishing that because we make them big and all this kind of stuff, uh, you pe hear people say, well, what's the point? I'll just quit them tomorrow so I don't have, you know, have to wait till mid-February. Well, this is this, this passage right here in James chapter 1. It talks about how when there's a trial and there's a test, right after that is where he talks about if you lack wisdom, ask. See, a trial and a test is not to be taken again. It's to be passed. A tri a tri you're not to take kindergarten again or first grade or second grade. You're not to try to take your welding test again and again and again. You're to pass that test and go on and get certified into the next thing, into the next thing, and you're to advance. That's the way God designed it. And if you're having to take the same test again, the Lord says, and he inserts this very next verse in 5, he says, then ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. And when I give it to you, don't let my word that I gave you as not your way, but a way that's from above, because if, it, well, if you didn't need, if it was your way, you would have already had it. But you now ask, and he said, now when I tell you my way, which is as high above the heavens, like far more than yours, okay, it's a way that doesn't lead to death. There's a way that seems right, Proverbs, right, that the end leads to destruction, but God's ways, right? So he said, but when I give you that way, don't let it, don't, don't allow the word that you have a fight with the word that I give. And so as, you'll be double-minded as long as the, is God's word to you, wisdom, when you ask is fighting with the word that you hold in your heart. So the one that is super easy, it, 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 I can tell you time and time again, is when you, it's such an easy example. It could be offense. When the Lord says this, you need to forgive. But it, you, yeah, but you don't know, you don't know, and you're not going anywhere. You, you'll be like a double-minded man, uh, like a wave tossed to and fro in the sea. You're not going anywhere. It's not even like a south wind where at least you're rolling to shore. It's just no, no clear direction. Well, the same is true like what she was talking about with tithing. When, when, when you know in your heart the Lord directs you, Lord, I'm asking for wisdom concerning this and concerning my finances and to lead me into a place of overflow. I'm asking for wisdom. Lord, whatever you want to, I will make room for you except for there and there and there. Just show me a convenient way that I could have my own way. This is something that we don't talk about enough, and that is if you're going to follow the Lord, you're going to have to take up your cross and follow him. You're going to have to take up your cross and follow him. And so it's interesting in James, he says when you're in a trial and you're in a test, um, he said persevere, okay, persevere and finish because the trials are, are testing and your faith is growing, all right? And, but if you, if you find yourself taking that test again and again and again, Ask him for his word. And then when he gives it, don't be double-minded and say, well, two words are going to always fight, and you'll be back and forth until you say, no, you know what? God's word is final authority in my life. Is God's word a final authority in your life? Let me tell you, if it is, he'll, his word will take you from death to life. His, his, his death will take you from the dungeon to the throne room. His, his, his word, I don't know what I said there, but his word will take you from here to hear. It'll take you from a pit and set your foot on a rock. His word. When you, when you make his word final authority in your life. Amen. And so I'm going to read a couple, um, I'm going to read this one scripture and this is where I got the title of tonight's message. Uh, I'm really not going to take much time to talk about this, but it's Proverbs chapter 9 verse 1. It just simply says this, that wisdom has carved out Okay, or, or, or it says, wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven pillars. This is the NIV. Uh, a lot of translations says she, he's, uh, wisdom has hewn, hewed out. Like, have you ever seen somebody hewn or I don't know, can't, it's a tough word for me to 
say. But basically, they take a, 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 a sideways, it looks like an axe, but it's turned sideways, and they take and they whack the wood, and, and they'll, they'll hew a log into a shape. Maybe you've seen one like at uh, Big Cedar Lodge where, where you have this big square uh, square timber, and it has like looks like cut marks. What they did is they those are hewed, hewed logs. Hewn logs. I can't. I don't know. I, I probably probably not saying it exactly right. But in other words, they're carved out logs. They didn't go through a sawmill. They they got carved out by hand. They were made in. And it says wisdom. It carved out something. Wisdom. This is how wisdom works. Wisdom works. Uh, if in your and my life, when you and I carve out, or in a sense, lay down something of ourselves, so He can reside there. I have to carve out something so he can reside there. So now I'm going to read two passages, and we're going to, then we're going to talk about them uh, tonight. And, and we've been reading in Proverbs. If you read in Proverbs 1 on January 1, you would have found out that this, this Proverbs, the book of, Sol, uh, book of Proverbs, is actually the book of really Solomon, who is David's son, a man after God's own heart, who took the throne at a very young age. And it, says, it goes on to say in Proverbs chapter 1, it says, These are the words... It says this in verse 2, um, these are the word, one, Proverbs 1, one. it says this, these are the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. They are written for gaining wisdom and discipline, for comprehending words of insight, and for receive instruct, receiving instruction in wise living, in righteousness, justice, and equity, to impart prudence to the simple, and knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and gain instruction. And the discerning acquire acquire wise counsel by understanding the proverbs and parables, the sayings and the riddles of the wise. This is how you get it by understanding. So you can't just hear it once. You gotta you gotta put it on and say, okay. You don't just. It's not wisdom doesn't come because you read a proverb. Wisdom comes because you understood it because you received it. You received it. The only way you can receive a word if you're a teenager and and your your dad says, no, you're not going to such and such party. The only way you can receive that word is it is and under is if you lay down your word. You got to receive it. When you receive it, that that's when it brings life. You're gonna have to. What's your reply back to to, to the word of God? Anyway, here we go. Um, so we're gonna read the story of of Solomon and what made him wise. What made him wise? And what I'm gonna just make this simple statement, and you're gonna see it. Uh, and, and we're going to read this, and we will, we'll say it a few times tonight. You cannot walk in godly wisdom without self-sacrifice. Let's say it again. You cannot. You cannot walk in godly wisdom without self-sacrifice. First Kings chapter 3, 3 through 14. And Solomon loved the Lord and walked in the statues of his father, David, except that he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for, uh, for it was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on the altar there. Great sacrifice. Great laying down. <clears throat> One night at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, Ask, and I will give it to you. Solomon replied, you have so much loving, you've had so much, you, or excuse me, you've shown so much loving devotion to your servant, my father, David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, righteousness, and uprightness of heart. And you've maintained this loving devotion by giving him a son to sit on his throne to this very day. Verse 7. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in my father David's place. But I'm only a child. Not, not knowing how to go in and how to co go out or how to go out and how to come in. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a people too numerous to count. Therefore, give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people and to discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? Now, please the Lord... That Solomon had made this request. So God said to him, since you have asked this instead of requesting long life or wealth for yourself or death for your enemies. But you have asked for discernment to administer justice. Behold, I will do what you've asked. I will give you a wise and a discerning heart. 
so that there has never been nor will ever be another like you. Moreover, I will give you what you did not request, both riches and honor, so that during all your days no man in any kingdom will be your equal. So if you walk in my ways and keep my statutes and commandments just as your father did, I will prolong your days. Second Chronicles 1, 1 through 12. Now Solomon, son of David, established himself securely over his kingdom, and the Lord, his God, was with him and highly exalted him. Then Solomon spoke to all of Israel, to the commanders of thousands and of hundreds, and to the judges, and to every leader in all of Israel, to the heads of the families. And Solomon uh, and the whole assembly went to the high place at Gibeon, because it was the location of God's tent of meeting which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. Now David had brought the Ark of the Covenant, or the Ark of God, from uh, Kirajerim to the place uh, he had prepared for it, because he had pitched a tent for it in Jerusalem. But the altar remained on the hill. Okay? So this is why, this is why it says David, David stayed in the presence of the Lord, but, but Solomon, he went to the altar. To, lay, to, to make these sacrifices. This is why he would, it says he did the opposite of what his father did. Because the altar was still there. Okay? It wasn't just the present. The altar was still there. And, um, and so it goes on in verse uh, 6. So, uh, so Solomon offered sacrifices before the Lord on the bronze altar in the tent of meeting. Where he offered a thousand burnt offerings. How many of you know that that cost a lot? Okay? Um, that night God appeared to Solomon and said, ask and I'll give it to you. Mr. Aladdin, sir, what we, oh. It's kind of like, wow. Wow. God was so honored by what he laid down. Amazing. Amazing how what we lay down gets God's attention. It allows him to speak. You know, there's a lot of times that God would love to speak, but you're too busy or I'm too busy. We got oxen to tend to, wives to tend to, a piece of land that we just bought. We got things going on. And, and the Lord can't get a word in edgewise, so he's just quiet. He's unwilling. How many times I would have come and, and, and I wanted to gather you, talking to the children of Israel, like a hen gathers her chicks, but you would, you would not. You were busy playing. You, you were very busy. And, and this is this picture where it's like the Lord wants to so many times speak to us, but we're so full, he can't put more in. Have you ever done that? Like you had co coffee, maybe you've been sitting at Cracker Barrel for an hour, an hour and a half, you've been there hanging out, and, um, and, and so you get coffee, and that coffee, you were talking, and you got about a half full cup of coffee, and they come around, and they, what do they do? Can I get you a warm up, right? Have you ever had that? And when they're really good, they keep, you don't get a warm up, you just get, it just stays hot. How many of you like that, you know, like? That, that's something. But how many of you know when you have that half cup of cold coffee and they come do a little warm up, it's still not what it should be. Doesn't it just kind of get after a little bit, you're like, man, if it's not too much trouble, I'm one of these. Could you just dump that out and bring me a new cup? Or can I just dump this in the, here, let's just do this. How about some hot coffee? When, when I, I don't want just warm coffee. I, I, that's just a pet peeve of mine. I don't like lukewarm coffee. I want it to be hot. You can't make cold coffee hot when you add a little hot to it. you got to start over. And so many times, this is how we're doing life, is we're like, okay, God, we'll put a little bit of you in, and you just can't get it there. One of the greatest examples I could give you, but you would maybe not fully understand, is mixing paint. When, 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 you, when you've lost the color match, when you, when you, let's say you started with white and you were trying to get to this light gray, and you didn't quite hit it right, and it got off, but it's darker. You're not getting it back. You can't add more to get it back. The only way you can get rid of that is you have to go back to the store and get this a new can and call this a mist tint. Anybody bought some mist tints? Maybe you don't know anything about that. You can't get it back. We're trying so many times to get a warm-up or just to keep adding things to a thing until it gets so full you can't keep adding to your life. You only have 24 hours. You have to lay something down. Wisdom carves out. Wisdom carves out. Let me say it this way. As, as Solomon did, wisdom laid some things down. Wisdom was, was came. Excuse me, let me say it this way. A bit more clear. Wisdom came. The word of God came to him because he laid something down. 
There are times, and as we are into the front of this year, and the plans of God for your life, for your family, for your marriage, let me tell you, wisdom will come to you about your children. Wisdom will come to you about your your finances, about your marriage, about whatever, about the plan of God for your life. If you would lay something down, if you'd lay something significant down in that prime time and say, I'm just to seek you, Lord, and this would be your prayer, Lord, give me wisdom. In that space, if you lay that down and you say, Lord, I need wisdom. That's, I'm, I'm, that's what I need. I, I, I just need, I, I, teach me. Give your servant a discerning heart. Let's finish reading here, and then we'll, we'll get into the nuts and bolts of tonight. So again, verse 6, the solemn offer sacrifices before the Lord and the bronze altar in the tent of meeting uh, where he offered a thousand burnt sacrifices. That night God appeared to Solomon and asked him, what shall I give you? Solomon replied, you have shown so much loving devotion to my father David, and you have made me king in his place. Now, O Lord God, let your promise to my father David be fulfilled. For you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Now grant me wisdom and knowledge so that I may lead this people. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? Man, I think about that as pastor. and I, Lord, I, 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 we, need, we need your word here. We need your word here. We need the vision. We need the plan. As a father, these, this is your daughter. As my wife, this is, this is more more his daughter than it is even my wife. My, my children are, are his sons. Who can lead these people? I mean, every person here, you have influence of in, 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 with, in, with God's people. We have to have. We have to have wisdom. Where, where you're at and you're working, who can lead and love these people? And, and, and who can do it except I hear from you, Lord? Who can, this is, has to be a prayer. And this is, this is a prayer when he laid something down. He says this. Um, uh, now grant me wisdom and knowledge so that I may lead this people. Uh, for who is able to govern this great people of yours? God said to Solomon, since this was your heart instead of requesting riches, wealth, and glory for yourself, or a new car, or that house, Lord, I'm just asking you for a raise. Lord, I'm just asking you for this. I'm just asking you for this. I'm just asking you for that. I'm just asking you for this. How much of our time in our faith is spent asking for things and asking for breakthrough instead of asking for what is just, Lord, I just want what you say. I just want your words. I just want, let me tell you, if you're going to get wisdom, it's going to cost. We're going to look at that here in a moment. Let's finish reading this last passage again. He said, since you, uh, it was a heart that requested this instead of riches or wealth or glory for yourself or death of your enemies. And since you've not even requested long life, but you asked for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom I have made you king. Therefore, wisdom and knowledge have been granted to you, and I will give you also riches and wealth and honor, unlike anything given to kings before you or after you. Wow. I set before you life and blessing, death and cursing. Therefore, choose. Okay, let me say it this way. It came to me this way today. Chocolate or vanilla? Twist is what we're saying. Chocolate or vanilla? Oh, twist. I mean, we've, we've done really good at this in our society. We'll give you what you want, when you want, as quick as you want, as quick as I want. Because you know what we get then? We get chocolate and vanilla. But you know what we don't get? We don't get as much of the one or the other. We just get a little bit of both. And you know what? When you take that twist, how many of you ever noticed that when you got that Brahms twist cone, you don't really know if you got vanilla or chocolate in your mouth, do you? You don't know. I don't know whether I got chocolate or vanilla. You know what that is? It's like lukewarm. So when the Lord sets before us life and blessing, we said, we'll have that. Yeah, we'll have both. We'll have, I'll have my peace and that. I like both. And so we get a little of both. When the Lord says, hey, I'm asking this from you, and you're like, hmm, I can give you this much of this, and I know you're, I'll give you a little, and I'll get a little of both. And what, ha what happens is because it costs us nothing, it's lost. The flavor's lost. The impact is lost. What'd you get? Chocolate or vanilla? Well, I got mixed. I got, oh, I got twisted. I got twisted is what I got. My life got twisted. My life got twisted. It doesn't really look like salt anymore. My life gets twisted. When God's word, when, I, when he sets before me a choice and I think I can have both.
Luke 9, 23. And he said, if anyone is going to come after me, he's going to have to deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. Proverbs chapter 9, uh, verse 10. Fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? Now, all of what I'm talking about this morning is, is really how for you and I to not end up at the same test, but to advance. This is not like, what are you doing with your life? This is like the love of God saying, I want you to advance. And I don't want you to put me in the most convenient place. I want you to put me in the best place. I want, I, I want, I want, and so it says this, it says, all of Proverbs, we're talking about wisdom, in other words, God's ways, right? What God says, and as much as wisdom's a noun, it always brings about a verb, it always brings about action. But wisdom's a noun, it's a thing, but yet it always carries with it action. It says this, again, I'm going to read this, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. How do you know if you fear something? If there's a tiger... And the tiger was to walk down off the stage. Are you afraid of tigers? You would say so, okay? Okay. I'm a tiger, and this tiger is walking off the stage. What would you do? You probably would, but this is why we look. We don't give space. See, what you fear, you give space to. What you fear, you give space If you fear the lion, oh, sh- Oh my God. Right? You give space. When you fear the cliff, I'm not saying like, woo, right? Like I'm scared of the cliff, but like there's a reverential awe of that cliff. I'm not walking over going, okay, we're going to walk out to the edge and close our eyes and turn around backwards and hold out our arms and count to three. One, two, three. Oh, Lord. Whew, I did that one time. Only once in high school. Stupid. It was scary. Scary. But I didn't really fear it. I said I did. I said I didn't. And so I had to prove that I didn't. Oh, I'll walk out on that point and do that. No, you won't bet. Oh, yeah, I'll jump over that, that split rail fence and get over there. I'll do that. Silly. But this is how we treat. How do you know if you fear the Lord? Do you have space for him? This is big. It's so simple, though, isn't it? Like, if you are afraid of fire, if someone or guns or knives and they start waving at you, are like, hey, back up, hey. Like, give some space. Give some space. I have to give God space. Now, the fear of the Lord, the space, is the beginning or the start of wisdom. When you give God space, now you are poised. When you, as a rich young ruler, lay something down, now you're ready to hear, come follow me, and all of those things that we're going to be at. Because you gave God space. But if God doesn't have space, you don't have anything for him to work with. Again, you cannot walk in godly wisdom without self-sacrifice. You must lay something down. You must lay something down. Let me prove it to you, give you a couple of ideas. If you want to walk in godly wisdom without self-sacrifice, your diet, you know, because this body was given for you to serve the purposes of God. You cannot, you cannot walk in godly wisdom without laying that down. Yeah, but I really like to have that. So how can I do that? Well, you can just get this one medicine that has side effects of 108 and eight things, and you can take that, and then you can still have that. And you can get all the rest too. Or, or you can pass the test because you can say, I don't want chocolate cake. Instead of, I want chocolate cake, and I want to be healthy too. Double-minded, nowhere, here we are, 26, 28, 30, 30, and guess what? You're on six medications because you're double-minded, and you don't receive the word of the Lord. Is this helping anybody? I cannot walk in godly wisdom without self-sacrifice. Love. Love is godly wisdom, isn't it? This is the way God operates. But you know what? They did this. And they did that. And so I can't walk in godly wisdom unless I'm going to sacrifice myself. Yeah, it's going to hurt. 
But, but you'll find that when you walk in, that you're not having to operate in something that God didn't shed abroad in your heart anyway. He's just asking you to choose his way. He's not asking you to muster something up. You're not have to, you don't have to muster it up. You just have to choose it. I mean, you can look at spiritual growth. You want to grow spiritually? You want your family to grow spiritually? Do I want to grow? Yes. But how am I going to grow? I'm going to have to make some space. I'm going to have to make some self-sacrifice. And whatever you want to, so many times when we say, Lord, whatever you want to, we, we don't really know what we're saying or we don't acknowledge those words and say, Lord, is there anything in my life you want me to lay down? You want me? I remember there was a time for two years. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you raise up what is laid down. Um, but I laid down hunting. I got, I got way out of hand. This was when we were just probably two years married. And I got way out of hand and... Um, I got really convicted in my heart. I actually was watching a friend of mine um, now who's just an acquaintance. Uh, his life just, hunting was running his life, running his marriage. And I was like, oh, Lord, this is me. It's becoming me. And I was like, Lord, do I, what do you want me to do here? I remember sitting, I was sitting down at Phillips. I had built tree stands on this land out of wood, and they all rotted after I didn't hunt them. And the Lord added it back. Actually, today I just got an email yesterday morning uh, for my moose hunt in Alaska, which I've been emailing for two years to get a spot, but they always are rebooked, and they only take six people, and I email them again every first of the month, reminder. It's like, hey, just checking in, and he, they had a cancellation, and his response was this. We were just praying this morning that the Lord would show us who to have, and your email came in. And we believe this is the, to be the one. And I was like, amen to that. <laughs> and it just so happened it, it was the late season, which is the premium season. You know, you can only take three and three. So I got the best spot, which was a rebooking, you know, a group that was, had been with him for years. So they got the premium spot. They canceled. My email came in. He said, hey, uh, I'm looking forward to serving um, another follower of Jesus. Pretty cool. Isn't that cool? That's cool. That's what the Lord does. You lay something down. Here's the deal. It says this. It says, let's go here. Let's go in. Um, let's go to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. It says this. It says, the beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs you all you have, get understanding or wisdom. Get wisdom. Though it costs you everything. Let me tell you this. It will cost but guess, but guess what? what? It furnishes more than it costs. It always furnishes more than it costs. If the Lord is asking you anything, if you tell him, Lord, I want your way, I'm asking you for wisdom, and he speaks to your heart about laying something down or about walking according to his word and his ways, do it. Do it. Make space. I, whatever you got to do, sell something so you can do what he says. I hear people saying, well, I can't do that because I don't have any money to give. What do you have to sell to give? Like, whatever, what is he saying to you? I'm not, this is not a money message. I'm saying whatever it is, you, you got to do to make it, make it work. Do it. If he says, get on the treadmill, then make it work. If you got to get up early, if you have to not, you have to cancel Facebook and all social media so you can gain back those minutes that are wasted and turn into actually 45 minutes, an hour a day, then cancel it, cut it up, slice it, dice it, no more. Sorry, everybody, I'm not on it. You'll find that there's a whole lot more added to you that you didn't even know. So what is he asking? Whatever you want to. You know what I found is whatever you want to, I have to find out what you want to. And not what would be, I can lay that down because that's not that important to me. And that season's basically about over anyway. Proverbs 4, 7. I'm going to read this in four or five different translations. This is the NIV. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. The New King James says it this way. Wisdom is the principal thing. It's the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom in all you're getting and all you're trying to acquire. Get understanding or get wisdom. Abraham, or the Aramaic translation says it this way. I love this. Wisdom is the summit. Wisdom's the highest. It's the peak. 
It's what everybody's chasing. They don't just they just don't know it. Because wisdom is what furnishes everything, but yet adds to you the not no with no sorrow. Wisdom. What is wisdom? It's what God says. I was thinking about this today. Faith is just simply receiving wisdom. It's where you and I agree with what God says. We are walking by faith. We are walking with wisdom. Receiving what God says. The New American Standard says this. The beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom. And with all of your possessions, acquire understanding. The the Aramaic said, with all your possessions, purchase understanding. In other words, it's going to cost. I heard it said before, and you maybe heard it as well, the greatest ability is availability. You want to be used by God? You want to fulfill the, get available. Untangle a few things. Give him some time. Give him some space. Carve out something for him. Us, we've been, we, over Christmas break, we watched uh, kind of this old um, show called Little Men. There's a story called Little Women. There was a, a show called Little Men. It was kind of like the old Laura Ingle Wilder's Little House on the Prairie kind of setting. And in those settings, it seemed like every time at Christmas, they're carving something, you know, for a gift, you know, because they didn't have, you couldn't just always go buy something. So, you know, you got the, the, ma- the male is out there in the woodshed, you know, and he's carving something. And, and then someone comes in and he throws it under the blanket or whatever. And he makes the doll or he makes the little toy horse or the boat or whatever it might be for the kid. And the carving out makes a gift. It's, it's so, it's interesting. Time, you're just car- it takes time, but you're carving it out because you want to give something precious to the Lord. You've got to carve it out. Uh, Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2 says this. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not be conformed to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. If there's a perfect will, there's a not-so-perfect will. The way I walk in the perfect will is where I lay lay it down. Lay it down. Lord, what do you... This is... And and the thing about this is, here's what's so cool, and this is really what I ultimately want to get to tonight, is, is, is the prayer of Solomon which is give me an understanding heart. Give me an understanding heart. Matter of fact, I'll read this in a few different, uh, a few different passages. He says this, give your servant, this is 1 Kings 3, 9. It says, so give your servant a discerning heart. A discerning heart. The New Living says it this way, give me an understanding heart. God's Word translation says it this way, give me a heart that listens. The Aramaic Bible says it this way, give your servant a hearing heart. All of those words simply are translated and have its origin in one word that simply means to hear. To hear. Give me a heart that hears. Not so clouded with all the cares and all the fears and all of those other things. But Lord, I'm asking you just give me a heart that hears. Give your servant a heart that hears. What a prayer to pray at the beginning. If wisdom is the principal thing. If James tells us if you lack wisdom... Ask. Am I ask? What am I asking for? Am I asking for this and this and this, or am I asking just simply for wisdom? This is a, this is a, such a key for you and for you and me, and really for every year, for every day. Lord, direct my steps today. I'm asking you for wisdom. Give your servant a discerning, a hearing, an understanding, a listening heart. A listening, Lord. Here I am, Lord. This is Samuel. Here I am, Lord. Your servant is listening. Back up. Let's uh, let's go. Let's go to um, let's go. Let's go to the this last piece here. James, we already mentioned. So let's go to Proverbs chapter twenty four. We know Proverbs twenty four three says that through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. Through wisdom, you've read this, you've heard this. Did you know you're God's house? First Corinthians three nine says that we're laborers together with God. You're God's husbandry. Or you're his vineyard. You're his vineyard and you are, you are his building. You're God's field. You're his building. So you're his building. And God wants to, in a sense, if you've ever looked and, and, and seen how grapes grow, they grow on a trellis that the, the husband uh, 
the one that is the vine dresser uh, or does husbandry. He's the one that shapes those vines to hang on the trellis. He's the one that sets those branches up so that they can bear fruit and the fruit doesn't mold and all of those kind of things. Year after year, there's pruning so that the new growth that can, again, produce grapes the next year. It's so cool to think. He says, you're God's building. You're God's building. You are what God's working on. By wisdom, a house is built. So your and my life is furnished and becomes fruitful when wisdom is allowed to speak to you and me. God's build, God wants to build your life into all that you have. he's given you a glimpse of in your heart, but it comes with wisdom. It comes by wisdom. But wisdom only comes when we have carved out space. Unless I lay something down, there's no room. There's no room in the inn. There's none. There's just no room. You know? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody trying to get an exercise thing going? My wife told me about something today, and I shouldn't even be saying this, but I am. And I kind of got upset about it, to be quite honest. And now I'm going to have to clean that up because I just said that. But I kind of got upset about it, about a time to exercise. And when it's put in there, I'm like, in the middle of the day, is what I said. I got upset. I was like, what? Like, in the middle? Like, why not in the beginning of the end? Like, how do you do that in the middle? That was me. I just was like, what? Because I'm here I am in all of this. I'm going, why? How? Nah. And so I'm trying to have to, I'm having to wrestle myself with, like, going, how do I manage that? How important is that? Or which, more, which one's more important? Like, these are real things. Real things for me to go, okay, bodily exercise profits little, but okay, but so job. Like, I'm trying to wrestle. This is a real thing. Where do I put my job, the Lord, my body? He has an answer to all of it. And this is what it comes back down to. He has an answer to all of it. You don't have to try to figure it out. It's just like a message. That was something the Lord said to me. I was up real late, and I, I couldn't get, I had so many things going on that week, and I had plenty of notes, and I felt like I was diligent with my time. But yet, here I come, and it's Saturday night, and Sunday morning is the next morning, and whether you know it or not, that can feel like really heavy if you don't have the message that you're supposed to bring, even though you have all these things, so your Saturday night sleep is just terrible. And, um, and so this is going on, and it's late, and I'm laying there, and I'm kind of actually sigh. I'm like, to the Lord. <laughs> you know you know how you can, it's terrible. <sighs> you know, you've got to come up with a message. And the Lord said, you don't have to come up with anything. You don't have to come up with anything. You don't have to create something. I've already prepared it. You just need to hear it. Okay, yeah, that made it. Okay, I'm going to go to sleep then because you got it, and you just give that to me, and I'm gonna, and it just dropped right in, and it was just like, why did I stress over this? God has an answer for all of it if I'm willing to say, just like we talked about in the song, if I'm willing to lay it all down, anything. Hunting's off, not off limits. Golf's not off limits. What, sports is not off limits. Hey, nothing's, not, nothing's off limits. My... my Whatever it is that I'm spending this on and I'm saving for, nothing's off limits. If the Lord asks me for it, my son is not off limits. My son is not off limits, Abraham. And the Lord added to and he blessed. Amazing. So the answer is the Lord has the answer if I'm willing to give him the space. The Lord has the word. And he'll get, it'll take you, it'll pull, pick you up, and it'll pull you out. It'll set your feet on a rock if you'll give him the space. And that's really what I was uh, wanted to close tonight with. And I just wanted to close by at giving God space. And so I uh, wanted to, I wanted to really pray. First uh, Kings chapter three, Lord, give your servant a discerning heart. I wanted to pray Ephesians chapter one, where it says, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, like it, let him be enlightened, that I would see the hope to which I've been called. You know. Let my heart be enlightened. I wanted to pray, and I want to pray. James, Lord, you said if anyone lacks wisdom, let them ask, and you'll give abundantly. So that's I just wanted to pray those three scriptures, and here's why. And this is the last scripture, and then we're going to pray those. Ephesians chapter 1, 7 through 10. Ephesians chapter 1, 7 through 10. And I, I want you to tap into this. 
this portion of the grace of God. The grace of God, so many times we hear about, is by grace you've been saved, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so when we think about the saving grace of God as really the blood of Jesus that was purchased our salvation, and so we don't have to pay for our sins in that way. But the grace is so much more than that. It says this, it says, In him we have redemption through his blood. This is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. This is the a BSB. I'm reading it from my Bible. It says, For in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. That grace he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. So he gave us grace with all wisdom and understanding, and he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to bring all things in heaven and earth together in Christ. Can I tell it, say it this way? If you would take some time and just look at that, that passage of Scripture, you would see that the grace of God furnished, he furnished with wisdom, he furnished understanding everything that you're going to need to get to verse 10, which is to bring all things together in Christ, which is what you were created for. He, his, this grace furnished you with the wisdom, the God way, to, to order your days, to raise your family, to serve on your job. He gave it for all of it to bring about and to assemble or to, uh, to bring all things together in Christ. This is what the grace of God is for. It's not just a saving grace. It's a wisdom for every day. It's a God word for every moment. It's not just a word but it's a word and his equipment. And so we pray that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened and that we would know the hope to which we've been called and that we would know the power that is, is toward us who believe, the, the greatness of his power that's in and toward us, for us. Wow, it's so much more. And so I want to close tonight, if we'll stand tonight, I want to close by praying and asking God for his word on everything. And, I, and I, I think that in order to hear this year the way what, you, what, what God is saying, we have to take it to heart what Solomon was saying. And that is, I've got to lay something down. And you've got to ask the Lord. He'll tell you whatever you want him to. And so, again, 1 Kings chapter 3, he said, he said, Lord, give your servant a discerning heart, a hearing heart. He said in... James chapter 1, he said, verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, just ask and he'll give. He won't say, what, what's your problem? He won't say, well, uh, come on, you should know better. He'll say, let me lavish that upon you. And Ephesians 1, he says, this was Paul praying. He said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding, the eyes of your heart would be enlightened. You'd know the hope, the picture to which you've been called. Father, tonight we just come to you as a body of believers. And, Lord, we're assembled here. We're not just in our seats. We're assembled here under your direction by your hand. And we just say, you are Lord. Would you just tell them that? You are Lord. You are Lord. And it is our delight. It is our delight to, to lay down at your feet our bodies uh, as a living sacrifice. Father, just as Solomon, Lord, every breath, Every part of our being, we just, we just lay it before you tonight. We, we ask you to be honored and be magnified. And we're asking you tonight to give us an understanding, a hearing heart. So that we can lead well. That we could put one step in front of the other. And run the race finish the course that you've laid out before us. That we thank you tonight we, and we ask you that the eyes of our heart would be enlightened. That we would know the hope to which we've been called. Lord, any place that there's care or, or even as, as you said, uh, if you stand praying and you have uh, unforgiveness in your heart, uh, let that go. Father, any place where, where there's care, where you said be anxious about nothing, but through prayer, 
let your request, Father, we just release care tonight. We release fear over our children. We release fear over our, our, our bodies in the name of Jesus. We just lay that down at your feet. We just are laying some things down at your feet, the things that we've had control of, the things that we've held tightly. We lay those down, and we're asking you, Father, tonight for your wisdom and for you to illuminate our hearts. Give us a hearing heart. Unclog tonight. I just thank you for an unclogging of hearts tonight. clear to hear. Just such a clarity and such a simple simplicity where you come to us, Lord, as we say, Lord, we're laying it down. We thank you. You come and, and speak so clearly to us. And so we just rest in that. We rest in that. And we say, Lord, have order in our house. Have order in our lives. Have order in this church. And that order tonight, we put you in that the place of order. And that is first. We put, we put you first, first place. place. We just, just put, put you first place. place. First place. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Father, we make room for you. And we thank you for the plans that you have. They're so bright, filled with hope, great future. So fill hearts tonight with the brightness of future, a brightness of this year, because we're your children. Because you're a shield round about us. Because you lead your children. You lead us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. You lead us in the good way. Father, thank you for the good way. Psalms 23, 2, 3. Thank you for the good way. We just thank you for the good way. And that you are leading us uh, in your children. You're leading us uh, in the good way. We thank you for it today. We thank you for filling our hearts tonight with hope. And hope would not just be in our hearts, but it would be seen in our face, and it would fill our mouths, and we would carry forth the message this year, preaching Jesus. Everyone, everywhere, Lord, every day, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is Lord. I gotta change that sometimes a little bit because I don't I think I understand that Jesus is my Lord. Jesus, and I, and I it, what went off in me is is in that email actually from the moose hunter pilot. He said, I'm looking forward to serving someone else who serves King Jesus. And I thought, that's so cool. He's king. I think sometimes Lord for me, it just that king word just kind of, it just did something to me today. You know, sometimes it just goes off and you just did something. You're the king. He's the king. He's the king of our hearts. He's the king of this house. He's the king of our house. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We will see you Sunday for Brother Marty. And you'll want to come expecting. And then Christmas decor, you know, take some trees or whatever. You know, hang out. Good night.